my new life. I'm so glad you're here today. My name is Jeannie Fisher, and I work with our high school girls in the student ministries. I miss them a ton, and um, I have to say I'm very excited for two reasons. One, because I am out of my house, and I'm at church, and I got to wear clothes, real clothes today, so that's good. But you guys aren't here, so I can't wait till we get back and we can all be together again, and we can hug, and we can worship, and really looking forward to that day. Um, but in the meantime, um, I'm also excited because we get to walk through First Peter 1, 8 through 9, and continuing with um, what has already been started this week. So I relate to Peter in a lot of ways. I have strong faith in our Lord, and I'm following him, and then all of a sudden, my actions take a, a wrong turn somewhere. Um, God humbles me, he loves me, and he brings me right back to him, which is just what he did with Peter and what I know he's done with each of you. Peter's not a stranger to suffering, and as Tex and Greg reminded us earlier this week, um, he's writing to people who have suffered greatly. He wants them to see how suffering produces greater faith. Um, so we're going to read 1 Peter 1, 8 through 9. Though you have not seen him, you love him. Though you do not now see him, you believe in him and rejoice with joy that is inexpressible and filled with glory, obtaining the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Is anyone else excited about obtaining the outcome of your faith? I'm really excited for that day. Um, when reading, I like to look up definitions so that I can fully understand what I'm reading. So let's start with faith. What is faith? Faith is a strong belief in God or in the doctrines of a religion based on spiritual apprehension rather than proof. So what is spiritual apprehension? <laughs> um, it's a person who seeks by contemplation and self-surrender to obtain unity with or absorption into the deity or the absolute, or who believes in the spiritual apprehension of truths that are beyond the intellect. So basically what this means to me is that Faith is a strong belief in the one true God, radical trust that does not require proof or evidence, trusting that God's word is the truth, and then surrendering to him and living this out by loving people and loving God. So now that we understand what faith is, we can look at this passage. So Peter was there when Jesus said to Thomas in John 20, 29, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. He's really repeating this as he says in verse 8, Though you have not seen him, you love him. None of us were alive to see Jesus firsthand, so we all love him not based on sight, but because of our faith. This kind of faith not only brings us salvation, but also a beautiful promise of a day when pain will end and perfect justice will begin. Faith will be rewarded and evil will be punished. And that's a promise. But until that glorious day comes, what does it mean or what does it look like to live out our faith on a daily basis? And more so now as we're suffering through quarantine and COVID-19. We can faithfully serve God first by focusing on areas of our lives that are not, that are not bringing glory to God. Most importantly, our personal time with the Lord. I've heard over and over from students to adults that they don't have time to read their Bibles and pray. Well, guess what? God has given you the gift of time. We have time right now. So use this time to build your relationship with Christ. Spend time with him. It will build your faith. And there is a big reward in spending time with him. When hard times come, we're prepared and we know his promises. Our faith will be strong. And while not easy, we can go through the hard times because our feet are firm and we are already filled up with him. Then this will pour out to others. We can also resolve conflicts with others, mend hurts, work on our marriages. Um, you can help your rebellious child by getting to the bottom of their hurts and their behavior. We can share Christ boldly now as people are more willing to listen. Loving God is also serving his people and feeding his sheep. We can send words of encouragement, grocery shop for those who can't get out. Uh, we can donate to the little pantry out front. I just saw someone getting food out of there on my way in. Um, it's easier to have faith when everything is going really well. It's a whole other story when things are hard. 
And um, But this is when we need to cling to God and our faith all the more, filling ourselves up with him and serving his people. God will use your suffering as a faith-building opportunity if you'll allow him to do it. Personally, I've gone through a lot of hard times and challenges in my life, and the one thing that I heard over and over from Christians and non-believers alike is, how are you so happy when your life is falling apart? And that question always made me kind of laugh because I wasn't really happy, but I had joy. And there's a really big difference in that. Faith brings a joy that cannot be expressed, but boy, can it be seen and felt. Um, Circumstances may make us unhappy, but they cannot strip us of our joy. We don't have to like our situation, but we are called to be joyful in it. Do all things with the joy of God, our God, who will return with his reward. I really hope that this blesses and encourages you today and that you have a joyful rest of your week as you trust daily in our Heavenly Father.